All right. Well, welcome. It's it's Thursday night. I look forward to these Thursday nights to our uh, weekly travel talks. And we've started these travel talks so that we can inspire you, educate you, and let you know what's happening in the in the world of travel. I'm sure everybody's really familiar with Zoom by now. Uh, we'd love to see your faces. So if you want to have your video on, we would enjoy that. Uh, everyone is muted due to the size of the group. This is also being streamed live on Facebook and will be recorded for our YouTube channel. You do have control of the video and you also can see that there's a chat feature. So during the presentation, if there are any questions, you can type them into the chat feature and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So good evening, everyone from rainy, cold, damp Edmonton. My name is Lisa Anflick. I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. And tonight's travel talk is being hosted by the six Edmonton Expedia Cruises stores in the Edmonton and surrounding area. And we started doing these travel talks when basically COVID shut everything down so that we could stay in touch and that we could let you know what's happening in the industry. So we are at 16 months of travel shutting down, but it is getting very exciting with second shots being given, as well as the mandatory uh, hotel quarantine being lifted for fully vaccinated people. I think we are starting to see the tunnel, not just the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's very, very exciting because if you're like me, you're missing travel. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And I know that we all can't wait to get back to it when it is safe to do so. So last year, it was a, a very challenging year, obviously, but what keeps us going, I think, is the thought that we can still tra plan travel. And we may not feel comfortable traveling now, but planning a trip gives us a lot of pleasure. Statistics have shown that 40% of the enjoyment of a trip comes from just planning it. So whether it's a relaxing vacation that you want, whether it's to go to see some of the iconic cities in Europe, or some beautiful places in Asia or Australia, or tonight we're gonna to focus close to home in terms of Churchill, Manitoba. It's nice to be able to have something to look forward to. Now more than ever, a travel consultant is of real value. And we have spent, all the Expedia Cruises consultants have spent the last few months learning the new protocols, which after we learn it, it gets changed. But we are up to date on what is happening in the industry. What do we need to do? Travel will become a little bit more complicated than it has been in before. So you will want the advice of a travel consultant. We are here to help you navigate through all the complexities so that you can have a seamless and safe vacation. We are committed at Expedia Cruises to finding you the best value for your travel dollars. And we're more than just cruises. Our name is Expedia Cruises Air, Land and Sea Vacation. We can help you every step of the way, whether it's with your flights, your hotels, your tours, your cruises, your land packages. And best of all, we are local. And I think that is something that we all feel good about is supporting local. So I'm going to move on now and introduce our special guest, Darcy from Anderson Vacation, who's going to educate us on Churchill. Welcome, Darcy. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. And thank you to everyone at Expedia Cruises for having me this evening and to all of you for joining us. I'm kind of glad it's raining in Edmonton so that you uh, can all be here joining us and not missing out any sunshine tonight. So I'm going to just share my screen and hopefully it'll come up just fine. You can just let me know that it looks okay. You can all see my screen? Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, once again, welcome from Anderson Vacations. We are extremely thrilled to be working with Expedia Cruises. They're a fantastic partner. And as Lisa mentioned, it's never been more important than now to support local. We are a Canadian company. We are Calgary based actually. So we are Alberta based and we believe in supporting local and working with our travel agent partners who are absolute professionals, especially the people that you're working with here tonight. So without further ado, we are gonna get started. As mentioned, Anderson Vacations being a Canadian company, shopping local, we do all kinds of um, trips for you. We have independent travel, we have small group, travel and then we also do a many self-drive products that are really really popular right now and we do cover all of Canada 
all of the provinces and the territories. So we've got you covered when it comes to Canada. Now, my name is Darcy Gorderes, and I am the Director of Business Development for Anderson Vacations. And I'm the luckiest person in the whole wide world because I love my job so much. And I've traveled Canada from coast to coast to coast. I've even been to Tuk 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 and had the opportunity to go way up north. And uh, I am a Winnipeg girl. I'm a Manitoba girl, actually. So I'm not afraid of the cold. But I did, um, I did grow up in Alberta in a place called Drumheller. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And then I was in Manitoba for about 25 years. And now I'm a BC resident currently on Vancouver Island. But whenever I get to talk about Manitoba, I get really excited. So when I, when I was invited to do this presentation, well, I was just, I was just completely delighted. So let's get started. Now you cannot, you can get to Churchill without stopping in Winnipeg. Only just recently, um, one of the companies that is based out of Churchill has actually just added a direct flight out of Calgary to Churchill, one departure for this August. So when we talk about the different seasons, keep that into the back of your mind that there is a departure this August um, out of Calgary that is a direct flight. But primarily, most flights do go through Winnipeg. Now, in the past, People used to just get to Winnipeg and then get out of Dodge as fast as they could so they could get to Churchill. But things have really, really changed because Winnipeg has come into itself in the last few years. I remember living there and my parents used to come and visit and I'd struggle to find things to do with them, you know, sightseeing and things like that. But it's very different now. There's all kinds of wonderful things to do in Winnipeg. So I do recommend that you do at least a two night stay there. But before we get to that, let me first tell you about getting from Winnipeg to Churchill. You can fly, of course, that's the quickest way. It's only a couple hour flight and there is a couple of options for airlines to get you up there. But what I do suggest if you're a rail buff like I am, perhaps considering taking the train one direction and then flying home. I like to take the train on the way there and then fly home because on the, when you've done your journey at the end, you're kind of ready to get home. But the rail portion is really part of the journey. So it's a great way to get there and it's quite fun. Now, as I mentioned, Winnipeg is the, the gateway really to Churchill and it's such a lovely place. Of course, it's known for the Winnipeg Jets, Winnie the Pooh, and if you've been there before, Morden's Chocolates, the best chocolates ever. And I know that because I have a child who worked there for a few years. So I had my share of Morden's Chocolates. Lots of famous people coming out of Winnipeg. We've got Chantelle Kraviesek. Tom Cochran is from Winnipeg. Um, Fred Penner, if, you've got, if you remember Fred Penner from way back when. So there's a, lots of stuff going on in Winnipeg. And I'm going to share a few of those things with you. There's this wonderful little district there called the Exchange District. And this is where it's close to most of the majority of the hotels, within walking distance of most of the hotels. And it's where you'll find these fabulous restaurants. Winnipeg is such a multicultural little city. And if you talk to someone on the street corner and you, and you, you know, ask them questions, they'll help you. They'll walk you to where you need to go. It's very, very friendly. And in this area, it's no different. Lots of lovely shopping, nightlife, and things to do. From there, you can actually walk to um, a market called the Forks Market, or we call the Meeting Place. So here you can come and dine at all kinds of wonderful restaurants, international shops as you walk through. And now it's kind of got this European feel to it, where you can actually buy a beer and walk around outside, which I don't know why we haven't done that sooner, but it's just a really fun atmosphere on the river. The Forks is actually um, at the fork of the Assiniboine River and the Red River. So it's really unique and a lovely, lovely spot that you should visit while you're in Winnipeg. Now in the same area, the, the pardon me, the Canadian Human Museum for Human Rights. Um, I, ha I have only just recently been to this prior to the pandemic beginning. And I'm ashamed of that because I lived in Winnipeg for a long, long time, but we tend to do that. We don't visit the um, attractions in our own hometown. This is the only museum in the world that is devoted to human rights, uh, awareness and education. And it's beautiful. When you walk into this museum, you go up this incredible corridor and it kind of takes you up to the very top where the light is. It's a, an educational experience for all ages. Now, if you're going up to Churchill, I would recommend that you do 
uh, visit the Assiniboine Park Zoo because they have this incredible award-winning exhibit called Journey to Churchill. And you can walk through this area and they have not only polar bears, but they have muskox and white arctic fox and all kinds of other animals. But it's like a little mini Churchill. And one of the most amazing things is they have this glass tunnel where you can walk through the tunnel. And if you're there at the right time and they're feeding the polar bears, they'll actually throw lettuce and a few vegetables in there and these bears can be right above you. So you can see these giant paws right over top your head. It's a great place to hold events as well. In Winnipeg, there's a, uh, in the um, legislative buildings, there's a tour you can do. It's about an hour and a half long tour. Um, it's for, called the Hermetic Code Tour. And this is actually a Canadian signature experience. It is a guided tour. And there's all these little secret hidden codes throughout the building. Um, they say it's the modern reconstruction of King Solomon's Temple. And it's got these like hidden secret things. So a really great tour to do when you're in downtown downtown Winnipeg. Um, Festival de Voyager. Now this happens in February and there is um, some great, a great reason to go to Churchill and to Winnipeg in February, believe it or not, because uh, people say, why would you go to Winnipeg in the coldest time of the year? But there really is some great reasons to go there. One of them is Festival de Voyager. And this is a tribute to the Francophone culture in Winnipeg. Just one of the many cultures that are celebrated here. And they have um, you know, French music and food and entertainment, and it really is fabulous. And it really keeps um, people engaged in the wintertime, getting out of their homes, even though it's cold, and really enjoying this festival. Now, this place is like the best kept secret in Winnipeg. I make sure I visit it every single time I go here. And if you've been to um, Whistler, there's a wonderful Scandinav spa there, or Nordic spa, Winnipeg has one as well and I love this one even more because it's a really new facility and it's hidden amongst this lovely forest. You just would be so surprised when you come upon it and it's one of those circuit spas so you go from um, hot to or I think you start in the, the warm water then you go to the hot and then you go to the freezing freezing cold where you dunk yourself in the freezing cold water and you do the circuit three or four times. I promise you, if you do this experience, you will walk away the most relaxed you've ever been in your entire life. It's just beautiful. Now, once you've done all these things in a day or two while you're in Winnipeg, you're getting all relaxed and you're ready to head up to Churchill, whether you take the train or you fly, you will arrive in Churchill. Now, when you get there, it depends on the season that you're interested in going. There are actually three seasons that are really the focal point. If you're looking for polar bears, the best time to go is in the fall. So that would be October, November, and early December. But summertime is an amazing time to go to Churchill if you're looking for the beluga whales. You can still see polar bears, but it's really all about the beluga whales. And now we're really focusing on seeing the northern lights in the wintertime. It's the third best place in the world to see the northern lights or the aurora borealis. So there's lots of great options for Churchill. Now Churchill is known as the polar bear capital of the world, but it's also known as the beluga capital of the world. And I'm sure you didn't know this, maybe you did, but if you're going to Churchill in the fall or winter time, or any time of year really, um, there's a law there which forbids residents from locking the doors of their cars because there must always be an escape route in case a polar bear wanders into town. And it does actually happen occasionally. Now, once you get to Churchill, it's a really tiny little town and there's not a lot going on. It's, it's you know, you can't just wander around. The first time I was there, I did um, get off the plane, head to the hotel, and I decided to go for a walk without really thinking about what I was doing and came across a few signs that said, danger, do not walk here. So you really need to heed to the rules when you go there. You don't want to be wandering around too much. But they have these wonderful little gems you can visit. And one of those is the Inuit um, art uh, museum. It's called It's an Itak Museum. It used to be known as the Eskimo Museum, but they changed the name of it um, just recently in the last couple of years. It's not very large, but you could literally spend hours here seeing all kinds of artifacts and art that is all Inuit produced. So 
really, really beautiful. In the summertime, in July and August, if you're there to see the beluga whales, you can visit the Prince of Wales Fort. And this fort was a fur trading fort that was built to protect and control, of course, Hudson Bay Company's interest in the fur trade. And when you go there, you'll see the park people there and they'll take you on a little guided tour. Now, interestingly enough, we were wandering around here, I think I was there in July the first time, and um, it was the first time I got to actually see a polar bear. They're not roaming around all over the place, but we were on top of the fort looking down and we saw our first polar bear, which was very exciting. It was pretty sleepy and pretty lazy. And did you know that there is a polar bear jail in Churchill? And this is true because occasionally those naughty polar bears do come into town and they don't want them wandering around. So what they do is they put them in this facility for up to 30 days. Now, 30 days with no food and water, believe it or not. Now, it sounds terrible, but from what they tell us, it's actually just to make them uncomfortable. They, they go long periods without food normally in the in different seasons. So, so this is just to sort of warn them and say, hey, this isn't a great place to be. They put them in there and then when they're They've, they've spent their time, they've done their time, they bring them out and then they'll actually fly them out. And the last time I was there, they were flying a polar bear out. So they had a helicopter with a polar bear inside a net and they were taking it off to a safe area and releasing it, which I thought was just incredible. Now let's talk a little bit about summertime. So I have a great photograph of a polar bear because you can see them and it's a great time for photographers because the wildflowers are amazing. Now this polar bear is very white and clean. When I saw the polar bears in the summertime, they weren't quite this white as he is, but just a beautiful, beautiful bear. Now, again, I mentioned summertime really is, the focus is on the beluga whales, but lots of other wilderness as well. For birders, it's fantastic. For people who wanna take photographs of flowers and wildlife, you can see black bear and fox and lots more wildlife. But of course, the, the bears, as I mentioned, they really are raw. And if you look at the photographs here, you can see that they're a little bit more gray, a little bit more dirty, because of course there's, there's the snow. So they're wandering around the rocks. Sometimes they're a little bit dusty. We were super fortunate to be in a boat heading out looking for beluga whales. And we had a mama and a baby bear swim right beside our boat. So we were laying on our stomachs with our cameras taking incredible shots along the way. So it was really, really great. So you can see bears. So again, look at his paws. He's been roaming around digging in the dirt and just they're kind of lazy. They're just kind of hanging around in the warm weather. But here's the stars of the show, the beluga whales. Now there's many ways that you can see the belugas. You can go on a boat, of course. You can go in a larger metal boat or in a zodiac. But one of my favorite ways to do it is in a kayak. Now, well, the first time that I was there, I was in a kayak. And I went out when I arrived. Uh, we arrived sort of mid-afternoon. And I was there with a friend and we went out in a double kayak. So I was in the front and my friend was in the back and we were, I was so excited. I was paddling like crazy and we were heading out and we saw these wonderful beluga whales and um, it, was, it was amazing. But my friend um, was not so much into the paddling part of it. So I did most of the paddling. When we were finished the tour and we headed back to the hotel, the tour guide came to me privately and said, I could see how excited you were we have an opening tomorrow morning. Would you like to join the tour first thing in the morning? We just have one spot. If you're at the door by 7 a.m., we'll take you again. So I couldn't even sleep. I was so excited I wanted to go again. Next morning, I snuck out of my room and I went and joined a brand new group. Now, keeping in mind, they're all fresh because it's the first time that they have gone kayaking. So they get in their boats and they're paddling. Well, I didn't realize that after I paddled for a couple hours the night before, I had absolutely no body strength in my arms left. So I couldn't keep up with the group. So I was really disappointed. But the guide trusted me enough to say, if you stay right here in this area, then we'll let you just sit here in your boat and you can kind of watch for whales. Well, prior to going to Churchill, I'd done some research and I had read that if you sing to the beluga whales, then they'll come closer. So with all of the group gone, I decided that I would sing my favorite song as loud as I could because I would never sing it with anyone around. And lo and behold, as I'm sitting in the boat singing, 
along comes this giant beluga whale and it starts bumping the back of my kayak, which was absolutely the most terrifying and exciting experience of my life. And I hope you have an experience like that. This is another great shot of the beluga whales. You can see um, a mom or a dad and a baby. And you'll notice that the babies are actually gray. So the mums and dads are white and the babies are gray. So you'll get, hopefully you'll get to see those in the summertime as well. Um, the fall and winter time is definitely the time that you would want to go. So this would be October, November, or early December, if you're looking for a true polar bear experience. There is a lot of indigenous culture here as well. So if you're looking for something like that, of course you can see the Anukshuk here. Um, there definitely is some indigenous experiences in Churchill as well. They're, they're brand new. And if you're coming from somewhere where you don't have winter clothing, I'm gonna guess if you're in Edmonton that you probably have appropriate clothing. But if you're coming, if any of your um, guests are joining us from outside of Alberta, perhaps from BC, you may not have the proper winter clothing. And we can actually provide that because we do have rental clothing up in Churchill and in any size that you're looking for. It really is mystical and magical. When you wake up in the morning, you actually can see views like this one with the mist coming off the rocks on the tundra. It's like nothing you'll ever see anywhere else in the world. And it's not just the polar bears, it's the Arctic fox. And you notice the change in color, right? The white on the white, the ptarmigan. And it's not like when you arrive in Churchill, the polar bears are standing around waiting for you. If they were, it wouldn't be nearly as much fun. It's kind of like planning your trip. It's that whole exploration looking for the animals. You're out there searching for this wildlife. And so it's a really amazing experience. And there's a few ways you can do this. And that's why it's really important to work with your travel professional, your travel consultant, because if you go online and start searching, it is overwhelming. There are so many ways to do this. And your consultant is gonna work with us to match the perfect experience with what you're looking for to explore Churchill. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna share with you a few ways you can do Churchill. Again, we are the Churchill experts because there's so many different ways to go there. And if you're lucky enough to see a mama and a baby, well, that's amazing. One of the most amazing ways to do Churchill is staying at Lazy Bear Lodge. Now, this is a lodge that's located right in Churchill. So there's some definite pluses to being at this lodge. I would say it is the nicest accommodation in Churchill. And if you're looking for kind of that rustic lodge experience, this is it. It is in town. So when you wake up in the morning, you do need to make your way to the tundra. So you would be going out in the tundra buggy. So you would be spending some time getting to your destination where you start looking for the bears. For some people, they have no problem with that. And they really love the fact that they're staying in this lodge accommodation with the beautiful fire and some of the best dining ever that I've ever experienced. One thing to note at this lodge, there is no alcohol served here, but there are um, little pubs around, a couple of little pubs in town. If you wanted to have a drink after dinner or before dinner, you can do that. But I stayed here and it was such a lovely experience. I mentioned the dining. They do serve local cuisine. Again, no alcohol, but it's cozy, authentic, and the owners are absolutely lovely. But again, it's not on the tundra. You're in town. You do need to go out to the tundra in a buggy. Now, another one of the partners that we work with, another option for you, is Frontiers North. And they actually have an incredible experience on the tundra. So you only have to head out to the tundra once, and then you stay on the tundra. Now, you see this buggy. This buggy is your mode of transportation during the day. So during the daytime, starting around 9 o'clock in the morning, about 20 people, it'll probably be reduced right now because of COVID. And I should mention to you, for this fall, it will be the one and only time probably ever that if you choose to travel, you will be able to travel this close to departure. In most cases, you have to book Churchill a year to a year and a half in advance. But without international travelers, it's allowing us Canadians to explore our own backyard. So it's a great time to travel right now. Now on Frontiers North, on this buggy, you head out for the day. 
you do have lunch on the buggy. At no point do you walk on the ground while you're out here because you're always on the buggy on this one or on your sleeping buggy. And I'm going to tell you another quick story because I do love to share stories about my journeys. But my husband and I were on this buggy. And as you can see at the back, there is a viewing platform. So you can go inside to warm up and open the windows to take photographs. Or you can come out to the back and spend as much time as you want with the bears below you or on either side of you. Now we were standing in the back of this um, tundra buggy, my husband and I, and a bear went under. So where he is now at the back, you can see, he went under that platform and it's a grill. So you can see through it. And so as he came under, my husband knelt down on one knee and he, he I don't know what, how he ever came up with this idea, but he just exhaled. And when he exhaled, you could see his breath and the bear came directly to his breath and they were nose to nose through the grill just for a moment and everyone on the, on the tundra buggy was just we were just frozen it was just this magical magical moment and the bear just looked at him and stood and then and then wandered away just peacefully and everyone's very quiet all you could hear is the cameras just making little clicking noises just incredible and if you're lucky enough, you might get to see a bear this close, um, like my husband did. But the grill was a little bit tighter than that window there. Um, if you can see in the background, that is actually where you stay on the uh, tundra. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to view uh, to go to Churchill because you're truly out there on the tundra. Now you can see all those different cars. The two on the right hand side, those are sleeping cars. And then you have two more cars with a long rows of windows. One is a lounge car and one is a dining car. Okay, and I think I do have another photograph. This is inside of the sleeping car. So it's really cozy and cute. It's got the Hudson Bay blankets. It's very rustic. Um, now it looks like it's open. It's not open. You do have privacy. So if you're traveling with a partner or your spouse or someone, in most cases, you'd be on one side, and it does have a curtain across, and then a double um, soundproofed heavier curtain. So you'll have two curtains um, to sort of block out the sound and other people. But it is still fairly communal. I did hear a little bit of snoring, and they do provide some earplugs for you, which is, they come in handy. But I loved this experience, and so did my husband. We truly did. I believe there was about 20 people in here. Now, if you have mobility issues and you can't climb up to the second bunk and you want to stay in the lower bunk, you can request that. There is a possibility there may be someone up above you, so they'll put female with female and so on, male with male. So um, this is such a fun, great option. That's the buggy at nighttime. So isn't it beautiful? And you can see those windows. So at the end of the day, when you've been out searching for polar bears and wildlife, there's usually two buggies. And what's so fabulous is at the end of the day, you get back onto these, I don't know how to call them, like sort of stationary buggies, and you meet in the lounge and your wine and your beer is included. And the people from their buggy and our buggy get together and you share stories about what did you see? What did you experience today? And you have a lovely appetizer with wine and so on. And then you move to the second car and have this fabulous dinner with local cuisine. It's got Arctic char or caribou or elk or some kind of unique food. Just incredible. And if you're really lucky, you can go to the viewing platform at night and also see the Aurora Borealis. Another great shot of a mama or a papa and a baby bear. Just some really great inspirational photos. And so inside the buggy, you've got your cameras going. There's a washroom on this buggy, so you're on there all day, but there's a washroom. They do serve you your meal, your lunch on there because you leave after breakfast. And then you're back by four o'clock for, for drinks and appetizers. What could be better than that? Another great shot in the evening of the Aurora. Now, our own Megan, who works in our office, we actually sent her up there the year before COVID, so 2019, to experience the Aurora in February, because the best time to see the Aurora is really January, February, March. Um, I did see it in um, December, early December one time. But um, in the, if you're really looking for the Aurora in the wintertime, and again, they're, they're, I believe they're looking at trying to get an, a direct flight out of Alberta for this winter. They haven't got it yet. But... Um, it, and at this time in February, they have a diner here that you can go to if you go at the right time where you actually are sitting in a buggy 
looking up with glass windows above you, with the aurora above you, having a local meal made by an incredible chef surrounded by beautiful lights. Just incredible. But a great option for January, February, March as well. Now, when you're up there um, in the winter time, so let's say October, November, not the February departure, but October, November, the polar bear season, I have three options for you. Um, sorry, pardon me. One last option I've given you two already. The last option would be Churchill Wild, which is really great for the photographer um, who wants to really get up close and personal with the polar bear. You are actually on the ground with the polar bears with the Churchill Wild product. This is the only one that offers you this opportunity. They have three unique eco lodges. All of them are different distances outside of Churchill, two of which are fly in lodges. And so each one has its own unique personality. So some of them, one of them has um, a local den where there's the mums and babies come out and, and it's really a great opportunity to see and take photographs of mums and dads and babies and so on. And depending on what time of year you are, the one in the bottom uh, right hand side, a great option for beluga whales. They have thousands and thousands of blue whales come into the estuary at this one too. So lots of great lodges for the photographer. This is in particular for being up close and personal with the wildlife. Another great shot. So within some of the compounds, you can see how close these photographers are. They're always protected. Churchill Wild has been in business for over 50 years and they've never had an incident because they are very, very careful. And so they do have fenced areas around the compound um, but when there are times when you're out in the tundra and there's nothing but you and your guide and the bears there's no fence between you so great for some amazing photography I like to throw a recipe in. So this is the traditional Bannock recipe um, from, of course, the First Nation culture in this area. If you're interested in this recipe, you can just let your consultant know. We can make sure, or when the recording comes out, you can take a, a photograph of that. But we actually, that, that is a photograph of the Bannock that we did eat uh, while we were there. We, they cooked it for us over a fire. So that is my presentation and let's see how we did. We did it in record time. I'm just wondering if there's any questions that did come up at all. Thank you, Darcy. You know, it's really interesting. I think all of us think of going to far away places to see amazing things. And what you've shown us is close to home. We can absolutely enjoy some incredible experiences. I love the, the, uh, the, um, the talk about the, the car doors, you know, can't be locked and, and the, the polar bear jail. I don't know if you saw my, my face to kind of just dropped open. It was like, really? Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just looking to see if we have any questions. If you do have any questions, please type them in. Uh, I don't see any questions at all. Um, so thank you for joining us. You know, it is time to start thinking. And as Darcy mentioned, if you are feeling comfortable in traveling so far this summer, because there are no international travelers, there are some wonderful, uh, you know, deals and availability for those who are feeling more comfortable and planning for the future. Um, as Darcy said, you know, Churchill, even prior to COVID is something that you have to plan a year ahead. And especially once the borders do open up, I think we are going to, um, to see a huge demand. We have seen the huge demand in travel because you know what, we've all been stuck at home and I love Edmonton, but I can't wait to get out of here. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. We appreciate your time. Oh, there is a question. Um, what is the travel time from Calgary? So out of Winnipeg, it's about two hours. So from Calgary, it and so when I say it's a direct flight, it doesn't make any connections, but it may make a fueling stop on the way up. So it could stop in Winnipeg or somewhere else along the way. But I would say it was probably from, Cal from Calgary, maybe three, three and a half hours. And I should mention, Lisa, right now, Manitoba has announced today that once you have two shots, you can go into Manitoba. So two weeks after your second shot, you can go um, into Manitoba. Um, so that's great news. So if you're you know, waiting for your second shot, you could possibly potentially go for this August, but most certainly for October, November of this year. And you know, it's very rare that there's sales on for Churchill. 
It doesn't happen very often because it's such a high demand product. But this year, you know, keep your eyes peeled because there could be some great deals. Um, they may not have as many departures as they normally would um, because of the demand isn't quite there. But I'm telling you, you you'll, you'll never find a better time to go and have more space and be more relaxed and feel more safe than, than this fall coming up. Wonderful. We we do have another couple questions. Churchill Wild can can the non photographer go to that lodge? A hundred percent. You might become a photographer. In fact, most of my photographs are taken on um, on my cell phone, and I get some fantastic shots just using my cell phone. So if if you know you've got a great camera or even a mediocre camera, it's pretty hard not to get amazing shots of, of wildlife. And like I mentioned before, you know, they're not just standing around. It really is part of the excitement searching and, and the guides are so good about getting you excited when they find something, you know, when you see something in the distance and you get a little bit closer, it's really wonderful. Wonderful. All right. I think that is it for the questions tonight so thank you all for joining us we appreciate the time that you take to spend with us every thursday we appreciate your past vacations we look forward to helping you plan your future vacations please reach out to your consultants we are here to answer any of the questions you have and to help you start planning reminder to follow us on facebook you can also check out our youtube channel where this and all other video presentations that we do are recorded Next week, so we've gone from polar bears and next week we're going to go to the big five. We're going to be featuring go away vacations and Africa travel and tour experiences. So please join us if you can. Thank you again. Enjoy your evening and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks everyone. Bye now.